That's all I need. Handful of lures. All right, now let's see if we could jump a deer out of here and get the daylight scared out of me, as usual. We'll do a tick check later. <laughs> this is one of my all-time favorite crankbaits that I think Bomber ever made. It's the Square A. This is a shallow running crankbait. It's just so edible. I would prefer to throw this than a spinnerbait any day of the week, where conditions dictate. It doesn't hang up, and when it crawls over a branch and it kicks to the side, and you see that bass come up from that tree and eat that thing, it's heart stopping. Oh, there he is. See the muskrat? Dude, let me snag him and see what the silver thread can do. Usually the muddier conditions will put them shallower. I always design lures to fish with. The first time I ever fly fished in the ocean, this school of bait fish swam by me. And I stared at them and I looked at the colors they had and I looked at how they looked in the water. I got out, I ran back to the condo and I started whipping up these flies like crazy. Went out there and absolutely slaughtered them. In my Bassmaster's career, I did exactly the same thing with fishing lures. There he is. There you go. When I stopped fishing Bassmasters, I panicked because I didn't know if I was gonna have a job. I sold my bass boat. Everything that I ever wanted in the world was slowly but surely being taken from me. So I go work for my brother and I walk in the body shop and he's explained, you know, this is where we wet sand and rub and buff cars. This is the paint booth. And, and this is where we mix all the paints. And he opens these two doors and it was like, wah, this light goes off. And I went, oh my God, dude. Stay on little girl. All right. I had been fishing this river since I was a boy. And now my sons are doing the same thing. It's kind of cool, really. That's called a tail out. They'll sit, the steelhead will sit up in those tail outs because there's a rise in the bottom elevation. You'll look in the water for boulders and little pockets. And if you're lucky enough, you can see the steelhead sitting behind them. And all you're gonna do is cast upstream and just let the current make the bait wobble. And then what I'll do is I'll steer it with my rod. I'll move my rod over and make it go the other way. It drives the steelhead crazy, especially when they're on their beds. And they'll just sit there effortlessly in that current. And that's where they kind of spawn. Everything that I do is about color because you're gonna have light refracting, you know, from the sun. Tingy green, clear water is gonna tint the bait different. And when you go up north and the water's crystal clear and you can see down 15 feet, you need those transparent colors. I design them with that concept in mind from, from the bass or the walleyes or the crappies eyes. Things that make the fish strike at the bait. Some of the strikes, dude, they're ferocious. And when people tell me color doesn't matter, I wanna pull my eyes out because the reality of it is, if color didn't matter, then just make everything black. This is so awesome. No expensive bass boat, just a pocket full of lures. One fishing rod. This is the deal. There he is. That's a good one. Come here, little girl. Don't hook me. <laughs> Everything I did in my life was tailor-made for this. If you stay focused on what you really love to do in life, everything just seems to, you know, go like that. It's like to create a color that works in Ohio, that'll work in New York, that'll work in Florida. These smallmouth are crazy. They're hitting right at my feet. People are catching fish that I want to catch someday, and they're catching them on colors that some dude in Cleveland, Ohio created in his basement. You know what I'm saying? It's unbelievable. <laughs> that is awesome. I can't even believe it.